please, please, I can't breathe. Man dies after being detained by Minneapolis police. My stomach hurts, my neck hurts, everything hurts. I need water or something, George Floyd cries out. He continues, please, please, I can't breathe, officer. I cannot breathe, I cannot breathe. The grown man even calls out to his mother, saying heartbreakingly, Mama, when his actual words stop, his agonizing moans begin. George Floyd dies after saying he can't breathe with cop's knee on his neck. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. On this episode of Sister Power, Honolulu civil rights attorneys Daphne Barbie Wooten and Andre Wooten talk about the killing of African Americans as racism disease. Aloha, Daphne. Welcome to Sister Power. And we are thank talking you. about, thank you for coming. We are talking about this horrific event that happened on Monday. And let's just jump right in. What are your thoughts upon viewing the videos? Uh, the murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis was horrific, horrendous. It made me sick to my stomach. You could actually see the three officers on him with the one with his knee and his full weight on uh, Mr. Floyd's neck. You were able to see the lies of the police officers told after they murdered him when they said, oh, he was resisting arrest. And then they showed the video, he was handcuffed, he was not resisting arrest. There's no call for murdering someone like that. Um, it's just another example of the line of history of horrific killings of black men and black women. Um, not just by police officers, but by vigilantes, because remember this comes on the hill of Ahmad Aubrey, who was jogging down the street in Georgia and was shot by two white males who decided he must be a burglary suspect because he's jogging on their street, shot him and killed him in cold blood. He had no weapon on him. Um, and, it, and then they had a friend videotape the murder following them to help them if they needed help in killing him. That's, it's just horrific. And then we already have a lot of problems with COVID-19. And then to see this attack against black men and black women, because remember also um, between Ahmaud Arbery's murder and Mr. Um, Floyd's murder, there was a woman, an African-American woman, who was sleeping in her bed in an apartment and police broke down the door undercover and shot her several times. And that again was a cold-blooded murder. She wasn't doing anything but sleeping. Um, then there was in March, 2020, another, another young man was in his car and he was stopped in Indianapolis and the police killed and shot him. His murder was on Facebook, Facebook Live. He streamed it. And um, you could hear the officer after he's killed saying, oh, I guess they're not gonna have an open casket, laughing. These are murders of human beings. And, and, and yeah, it makes me very sick and myself, not just me, but a lot of people sick. In the um, George Floyd matter, the police just came out today. The uniform police said that they don't condemn this type of behavior. A police officer, they were fired, but let's see them get arrested, let's see them get charged for murder and conspiracy to commit murder. How can you have a teenager who's videoing the murder tell you, let him go, and he's breathing, please, I can't, I'm saying, please, I can't breathe, asking for his mother, and you still keep your knee with all of your weight on his neck? I mean, that's horrific. It, it, it's nauseating. Fortunately, the lawyers are getting involved. We have Benjamin Crump, who um, also represented Trayvon Martin. Yeah, this goes way back, um, getting involved, and he's representing the um, next of kin, the sister, the mothers, um, and you know. But this needs to stop. Yeah, I'm, I, I still can't breathe. You know, right now, just listening to you. Um, go over the events that are happening in less than a month. We're still seeing and witnessing that. What legal rights have been violated? Walk us through that, besides them murdering an innocent man. Oh, there's a lot of legal rights violated and <laughs> civil rights and constitutional rights. Murder number one, a crime has been committed 
in all of the three, all of the four cases I mentioned, crimes have been committed and they need to um, start over some of these people. They did arrest the two men who shot and killed um, Ahmed Arbery. Um, they haven't arrested the police officers that killed George Floyd. They haven't, um, to my knowledge, arrested the police officers that killed Breon Taylor, who was shot in her bed. Um, and they haven't arrested the police officers that killed the young man, Sean Reeds, in Indianapolis and laughed and said, I guess they're going to have a closed casket. How cavalier is that? And considering another person's life who's a human being. And none of these four people were, violate, were violating the law. None of them had any weapons. Um, they were just murdered. Um, so in addition to that, you can always file a wrongful death lawsuit against the perpetrators. And in some instances, you have to file a wrongful death against the perpetrators because a lot of times, and most often, sadly to say, the um, criminal justice system doesn't work and many times police officers or vigilantes are not arrested. And in fact, when you consider Ahmed Arbery's case, the two vigilantes who shot and killed him, uh, two prosecutors in Georgia did not think it was a crime. Mm -hmm. So they weren't arrested until you had it, the video. And the videotapes showed everything that happened two months later and um, independent people looked at the video and it was shown all around the world. And then they decided, oh, I think we better take action. And then they charged the two men, father and son with murder, as well as the person who videotaped the murder with conspiracy. Well, getting but, back um, to George Floyd, getting back to George Floyd, yes. prosecutors and United States attorney are trying to decide if excessive force was used. Let's talk about their tactics with that. We, we the, the entire United States are witnesses. Everyone who owns a TV yes. and a computer, yes. we are witnesses. So talk about the, the tactics of the prosecutors and the United States attorney. Oh, that's the Department of Justice. It's run by Mr. Barr who, um, uh, wants to let go, uh, uh, drop charges of, of, of uh, cronies and friends of uh, the president uh, who had stolen a lot of money and um, done a lot of shady deals. Uh, he's willing to uh, drop those charges or have the attorney general drop the charges. So let's see if they decide to actually prosecute the police officers. I think also Minnesota, the state of Minnesota can certainly prosecute them as well. So um, you have two avenues of prosecution for criminal acts. And you also have the civil act um, in filing a lawsuit against the perpetrators directly and getting money. Um, you know, I would think that when you have all four of your senators and representatives such as in Minnesota come out and say, this needs to be prosecuted. You have the mayor of Minneapolis um, getting on TV and saying this needs to be prosecuted. You have the uh, police United Uniform Police uh, Association saying these tactics should not be used um, against a person who's being arrested. Actually, you have the whole world watching to see what's going on. And it appears to be a double standard when a black man or a black woman gets killed, uh, arrested, Whereas if you have somebody like Flynn um, and other people who haven't even been indicted, who clearly have done shady deals, they don't even get arrested. And if they do get arrested, the DOJ decides to dismiss their case. Wow. Well, you know, let's bring it on home to our backyard here in Honolulu, Hawaii. And it's been a lot of talk on Facebook about, you know, does racism or does brutality exist in Hawaii? And of course it does. Um, so this is part of the United States where people live. So yes, racism and brutality exist here. So briefly, uh, uh, Attorney Daphne Barbie, talk about your experiences here with that. Yeah, uh, both Andre and I and Andre here is joining me. I like We've that. <laughs> but the both We've of you all can cases. speak about that. Yes, we, we both can. 
we've had cases where um, uh, there has been police brutality. I brought a case to jury trial where my client, young Filipino brown skinned guy, had been arrested by the police off officers for DUI. Of course, he didn't have any alcohol in his system. Um, they pushed him off his motorcycle bike and they stomped on him. We had a witness who saw the stomping from across the street on her balcony and she came to testify at trial and he had a broken rib. His doctor said, you can't get that from falling off the bike. Police officers testified at trial. You, oh, he fell off his bike. That's how he got his broken rib. Um, he was tested for drugs, no drugs. Tested for alcohol, no alcohol. So they dropped the DUI charge and when we filed against the police officer in the city of Honolulu. We went to trial. We had our witness say what she saw and the jury came back and said nothing wrong. Um, similar to um, what happened in Los Angeles with Rodney King. You remember we had it on video with Rodney King yes. being beaten by the police officers. And when they went to trial, the jury came back and said, no, no, nothing wrong. They had to go through civil rights, the federal government in order to get justice on that case. And in there's other cases that we've had where officers have sat on our clients and um, killed one of them by putting its face in the mud. And um, that did settle, but I'll let Andre talk more about that. Over the years, um, gosh, I've had a number of uh, police brutality cases. Um, won some and uh, lost some, as, as Daphne has indicated. We even had one where the um, young son of um, African-American judge that we have um, was uh, beaten up by a police officer, basically for, he didn't like what he was saying, but he certainly wasn't threatening him. Um, and that was one that the, the city ultimately did settle. Uh, the Aaron Torres case was the one that Daphne mentioned where we represented his sister, who unfortunately had to watch uh, the police um, hog tie and uh, shackle her brother uh, the problem was after they shackled his hands and feet and put him on his stomach, then one of the cops sat on him. And the coroner called that uh, mechanical asphyxiation. And uh, the city did settle that one uh, with over uh, seven figures and um, they didn't even want to go to trial on that. Um, but those police officers uh, were not fired. Indeed, uh, they were promoted. They claimed it was an accident. They were promoted? Um, they didn't want to take that one to... Did yes, you say yeah, they were yeah, promoted? They were promoted. I yes. did say they got promoted. Yes, that was what I said. I just wanted to make sure I was um, hearing it right. All back, it all goes back to slavery. It all goes back to the fact that um, this is a nation of, uh, of uh, different kinds of people put together with uh, different kinds of views. Uh, this is a book that I uh, was written by a, a graduate of Reed College. Uh, where I graduated from. And uh, back uh, in 69, we took over the administration building and demanded that they create a black studies program. Um, but uh, this gentleman went on to be a psychologist and psychiatrist, and he's writing about the fact that um, Caucasian people in this country uh, used to own people and the benefits, the psychological benefits on top of the money. Uh, there was uh, there were harems, and there was just that uh, ownership of people, and that ownership of people is what you see um, in the recent case in Minneapolis with that police officer just nonchalantly looking around, strangling that brother to death, like it wasn't even nothing. Um, that's why Huey Newton uh, created the Black Panther Party, and. Uh, <laughs> the recent uh, situation with the um, uh, Trumpites in um, Michigan uh, storming the uh, legislature with weapons, uh, demanding that the state be opened up so that everybody could get the coronavirus uh, somewhat reminded me of when the Black Panther Party went down to the legislature in uh, California when Ronald Reagan was uh, governor of California and uh, demanded um, an end to the police brutality in Oakland. And uh, that led to the, some of the changes in some of the uh, gun laws in California. But there is a long history of um, the slavery and um, the um, slave catchers. Um, there's a long history of the Ku Klux Klan in the United States. There's a long history of the Knights of the White Camellia. Um, and 
African Americans have been fighting this oppression uh, since the very beginning. Denmark DC, Nat Turner, all of these people were freedom fighters, fighting for their freedom and the freedom of their families and to make America live up to its promise of life, liberty, and justice for all. Well, there's a the quote from, there, not to cut you, sorry to cut you off, but listen to you speak so passionately, um, Attorney Wooten, that Nelson Mandela has a quote, fools multiply when wise men are silent. This is why we appreciate you and Daphne here in Honolulu. But let's, let's even speak further, talk further about, please describe the historical perspective of the lynching of black people in America. Please continue with your dialogue on that. Well, you know, Ida B. Wells uh, was a great uh, journalist uh, who was born right after um, the Civil War. And she was a um, newspaper woman in uh, Memphis. And she began to write about uh, lynchings because some of her friends who were young African-American business people were lynched in uh, Memphis. And they were meant lynched by white uh, other store owners who were jealous and uh, desirous of their customers. I mean, the, uh, there were lies told about the African-Americans to justify their extrajudicial murders. And, um, but a lot of it was just basically economic competition and uh, trying to put, uh, and putting black people out of business, not to mention uh, the um, Tulsa riots of, uh, what was that, uh, 1917, where the whole city was burned down because uh, prosperous African-Americans were doing business. But after the um, World War II and the Korean War, to deal with the history of lynchings that was still going on in the South, the Deacons for Justice um, began a movement in, um, in Mississippi of the um, Korean African-American veterans and the um, African-American uh, veterans of uh, World War II uh, to arm themselves to uh, defend their communities against the Knight Riders and, and the killers. Um, even today, uh, we have this movement, you know, called Stand Your Ground uh, in some of the southern states uh, that really don't need them because these uh, laws are being interpreted in a discriminatory manner. You know, some people can stand their ground uh, and then some people may get murdered, like Trayvon Martin, you know, just trying to get home from the store. And Emmett Till, oh, can I just sure. briefly... Sorry, I just briefly jumping in because I. That's all right. Jump I on can't in. Help myself. Emma Till, 15 year old man, 15 yes. young man from Chicago, went to visit his family in Mississippi. And um, they, a woman, a store, a white store owner, alleged that he whistled at her. Well, he got lynched. The Klan came out, they found out where he lived, took him out and lynched him and killed him in 1955, okay, for allegedly whistling at a white woman. And later she admitted that she had made it up. He didn't whistle at her. But a 15 year, a 15 year old young man killed and murdered again. And it continues. And that's a way to terrorize how they want to terrorize African American males and females because they want they don't want us to get equality. They want to treat us as human beings. It is true. It yeah. is terrorism. Well, you know, let's just let's get back to I can't breathe because this is information that, oh my goodness, we're, we're living it. So we found out that Senator, the Senator, the Democratic Senator from Minneapolis, Amy, she was a an attorney and she did not prosecute the murderer. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. He had 10 planks against him, Derek, the murderer, and he was not prosecuted at all. And now we have a young man who's dead. The legal system is part of the capitalist system and it does indeed respond to the money and those who represent the money. The blue uniform, you know, gets a point in every jury trial, regardless of who's wearing that blue suit. And so it's not an even deck. And a lot of that has to do with the way in which the laws are written to protect the police 
And a lot of that has to do with the police unions. The police unions collect those dues from every police officer, black or white, and they engage in political activities to promote the candidates that will support uh, them. And uh, the result is that the citizens are losing out in not being protected and served by the people that are supposed to protect and serve them. Mm -hmm. In many states, you have to prove actual malice, not just negligence, not just wanton and reckless activity, but you have to prove actual malice by a police officer in order to actually have a police officer convicted of wrongful assault, excessive police force, or, or murder in this case. And so in Minneapolis, the people are demonstrating and writing because they're not seeing justice. They're not seeing anybody arrested. They're not seeing anybody charged. Certainly those people should have been fired because they weren't doing their jobs correctly as any intelligent person who looks at that video knows, but they need to be arrested and they need to be held uh, for trial. I mean, yeah, you can grant them bail if they can come up with a million dollars or so, but um, they need to be arrested and held to full account for their wrongful action. Well, let's never talk- I any apology from any of those four officers. That's true. Not that apology would actually do anything, but if you murdered someone, one would, and you said it was an accident or whatever reason they're gonna say, since they can't use the, the false accusation of resisting arrest, uh, that's heavy, heavy on your heart. It and, is heavy. And so, for you so to just go on and say nothing, uh, well, let's bring it back to George. Let's let's just talk a minute about George Floyd. And one friend, Vanetta Williams, told BuzzFeed News he was articulate, he was grounded, he was spiritual, he was an athlete, he was an organizer, he was a comforter, he was an encourager. So now we have the murderer that killed George Floyd with his knee and Kaepernick took a knee. Now let's talk about that for 30 seconds. I, that's a lot a of people are upset about Kaepernick taking a knee to try to encourage more justice and more fair treatment for people. So and he still hasn't gotten a job in the NFL uh, since that time, yeah. uh, which highlights yeah. the injustice that is ingrained in this unfortunate society that we live in. For all of the beauty that it has, it has this underlying double standard of racism, which was nailed into its core in those seven planks that protected slavery in the original slave constitution. A lot of people don't realize that the original Constitution didn't have slavery protections in it. The Constitution well, of 1789 was written up later and put those slave planks in there in order to get the businessmen behind it. And also many of the people who wrote the Constitution were slave owners. Of course. So, Which gets back to the election of college. We have so uh, much to just like to say one another thing. Could, could I say one other thing? Sure. Um, about three years ago, an African a large African American man was he was a guardian, an award to um, a, a, a young man who was developmentally disabled, and um, he was there with him, helping him through his challenges, and he was shot and killed by the police. Guess what? It went to trial, not guilty. Where was this? So hopefully things have changed. It was about three years ago, and I forget which town it was. It was a Midwest town. Okay. I had one case involving a large brother by the name of Vonta Perkins, maybe about 15 years ago. Vonta was a cook over at Kaneohe Marine Corps Base, and he took a bus from Waikiki to Kaneohe every day. And one day, uh, he was trying to get on the bus, and the bus driver slammed the door in his face, uh, and Vonta ran down to the next stop and pounded on the door and got on the bus, but the bus driver uh, stopped the bus and called the police. He claimed he was afraid of Vonta because Vonta didn't say anything and was just listening to his music. Well, the police showed up and uh, told Vonta he had to get off the bus. And Vonta was saying, why, why do I have to get, I gotta get to work and I haven't done anything or said anything. Vonta, 
ultimately got off the bus, sat down at a bench to wait for another bus because he still had to get to work over at Kaneohe to cook for the Marines. And the police came up to him and wanted to arrest him and question him and basically beat him up. So we filed a lawsuit uh, discrimination against the bus company. We filed another case against the police and the bus company agreed to settle their case for $50,000. And I talked Monta into taking it. Well, Vonta did, the police also offered $50,000, but Vonta wouldn't take it. We went to trial. Vonta was a large brother. I'm a large brother too. And um, the jury ruled that um, the police didn't do anything illegal. And uh, we did not win that case. And a lot of that, you know, it's hard to say, you know, um, some of it may have had to do with the fact that uh, Vonta was a large brother rather than a small brother. But at the same time, he was a law-abiding person and uh, his civil rights were, were totally violated. Oh, um, wow. You the know, the business of these cases, um, you know, compromise is not unusual. Well, you know, Daphne and Andre. But anyway, that's we the need, way that one worked out. Okay, unfortunately. But fortunately, unfortunately, at least the public knows racism is all around, all over the world. But I think we need to do a part two you have a lot of stories to tell. We need to do this again and chat again. And thank you very much. But I do want the audience to know at the end of the show, we, the George Floyd family, has started a GoFundMe page. So please write it down. It's at the end of the show. Aloha and thank you.